Our reading comes from John's Gospel, the first chapter, and the first 18 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh. And lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Imagine this. Some 13.8 billion years ago, Out of the overflow of love in the universe, God created and spoke the universe into existence with a big bang. And in that beginning of all things was the Word, whom John says was and is the Christ, who was with God always with God. Christ was in the very beginning with God. In fact, all things came into being through Christ, and without Christ, nothing could come into being, and nothing to this day could stay together. Christ is the giver of all life and light in the universe. Christ was perhaps the birthplace of the Big Bang, if you will. Christ is wisdom that birthed the entire cosmic universe into being. Poof! Bang! Boom! And the world came into existence. And it's been that way ever since. But then, billions of years after God created all things through this Word, through this Christ, Some 2,022 years from that big bang, from where we sit today, that same God that loved the world that God created sent that same Christ to inhabit the world he created. God incarnates God's self in Jesus of Nazareth in and through a teenage girl named Mary. That same eternal word that John speaks about, that was and is and is to come, that created everything, that holds everything together, that is the source of wisdom in the world, became flesh and blood, became a zygote, grew and was formed in Mary's womb and birthed in a stable. God in the Christ, God in the Word, came near to us, dwelt among us, and lived among us. Does that sound like the making of a really good movie or what? 
Can you imagine that first Christmas Eve, that birthday of Jesus? The waiting and anticipation for Joseph and Mary in their own lives would be forever changed socially, culturally, economically, and cosmically. Little did they know how this birth of this small child would change the whole universe. Author Max Lucado, who I don't quote very often, but I think he puts it brilliantly, says it this way, it all happens in a moment, a most remarkable moment. As moments go, that one appeared no different than any other. If you could somehow pick it up off the timeline and examine it, it would look exactly like the ones that have passed while you've been hearing these words. It came and it went. It was preceded and succeeded by others just like it. It was one of countless moments that have marked time since eternity became measurable. But in reality, that particular moment was like no other moment. For through that segment of time, a spectacular thing occurred. God became a human being. While the creatures of earth walked unaware, divinity arrived. Heaven opened herself and placed her most precious one in a woman's womb. The omnipotent in one instant was made breakable. The one who had been spirit became pierceable. The one who was larger than the universe became an embryo. And the one who sustains the world with a word chose to be dependent upon the nourishment of a young girl. God as a fetus, holiness, sleeping in a womb, the creator of life being created. God was given eyebrows, elbows, two kidneys, and a spleen. He stretched against the walls and floated in amniotic fluids of his mother. God came near to us. End quote. This moment of conception and birth into the world changed every other moment moving forward. God who is infinite became finite. God who is cosmic becomes local and specific. God who is far off comes near. God who is spirit takes on skin and bones and takes in the breath that God created. God who is life nursed at Mary's breast. God who is all-powerful became weak and vulnerable. Oh, what a gift we have to celebrate in this Christmas season. Do you realize this morning the breadth and the depth of the gift that exists to us in this Christmas season? The incarnation, the word becoming flesh, the birth of Jesus is the most amazing gift we could ever have imagined. I might even say it is our salvation. Father Richard Rohr says that Jesus' birth is the overcoming of the gap between God and everything else. It is the synthesis of matter and spirit. Without Jesus' birth, God remains separate from us, from creation. But because of the incarnation, we can say God is with us. Why don't you say that with me this morning? God is with us. In fact, God is in us and in everything else that God created. We all have the divine DNA. Everything bears the divine fingerprint if the mystery of embodiment in the incarnation is in fact true. End quote from Father Rohr. God becoming a baby is an event that altered all of life. God in the moment of Jesus' birth affirms that, friends, it is good to be human. The physical, the material, the natural, the bodily, the fleshly realities of our lives are good. They can be trusted, and in fact, they are divine. Can I get an amen this morning? 
the world, friends, through the incarnation is the hiding place of God. Think about that with me for a moment. The world is the hiding place of God. I love what Catherine said this morning. She wants to see light, awaken to light. If God is hidden everywhere in this world, our job is to seek, to look, to awaken, and to notice the divine in all things. For the real presence of God is everywhere, in your neighbor, in art, in music, in nature, in animals, in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, in food, in sinners, in our neighbors who drive us crazy, in our enemies, in work and play, and as we'll celebrate in just a moment, in bread and wine. As the psalmist rhetorically asks, where can we go from God's presence? Where can we flee God's presence? And as all good rhetorical questions as they're asked, we know the answer. Nowhere. There is nowhere we can go away from God's presence. This is the gift of Christmas. Jesus' birth makes visible the hiding place of God in Jesus, in a baby, in human flesh, in physical earthly reality of a messy birth. I just heard the opening lines of Rachel Held Evans' new book, and she said this, God shrinks down to the size of a zygote implanted in the soft lining of a woman's womb, grows fingers and toes. God kicks and hiccups in utero. God inches down the birth canal and enters this womb covered in blood, and God feeds at Mary's breast. Friends, if that does not affirm the goodness of this physical, earthly reality of our lives, I do not know what does. In the birth and incarnation of Jesus the Christ, God makes sacred once and for all, all the stuff of this earth. Politics, education, childbirth, food, animals, birds, feelings, sex, art, bridges, buildings, and even death is sacred because death is not a period. It is a comma of life continuing. And all this happened because God came near to us. Friends, God is not out there somewhere. God is here in this moment, right now, in you, in the person sitting next to you, at the end of your pew. In fact, that is God's name. One of God's name is Emmanuel, God with us. The gift of Christmas is that there is no separation. Again, in the words of Father Richard Rohr, our view of God as separate and distant has harmed our understanding of our sexuality our relationship to food, possessions, and money, and of our relationship to animals and nature and our own incarnate selves. The loss is foundational as to why we live such distraught and divided lives. Jesus came precisely to put put it all together for us and in us. The birth of Jesus, the Christ, in the flesh, on this earth, as a baby, as God with us, says that everything is sacred. Everything is transcendent. Everything belongs. Everything is enchanted. Everything is glorious. And we, like Thomas Merton said, are all walking around this world like shining stars. And yet we're unaware of it. So my question for us this morning, as we begin this new year, as we celebrate these last few days of the Christmas season, is have you seen this glory? Have you seen this shining star? Have you noticed it? Have you experienced it? And are you looking for God's glory within yourself, within the person next to you, and out in this beautiful world that God has created. 
me close with this. The last lines that we read in John's Gospel say this. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen God's glory. The glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. I don't believe John is just talking about people who got to see physically the human, divine Jesus. John is saying we all have seen God's glory because it is within you and it is everywhere. Our faces, our lives are now aglow with the glory of God because of the incarnation and God coming near to us. In fact, Paul would say you are being transformed into the likeness of God with ever-increasing glory. What a great New Year's resolution to say, I want to become brighter. I want to shine more like a star of my divinity in Christ this year. The glory that God gave to Jesus, Jesus gives to us through the Spirit. You and I are the dwelling place of God, both personally and even more so collectively, where the glory of God abides and dwells in each and every one of us. So in these last days of Christmas, because there are a few more days, and in this season and in this new year, I ask you these questions. Do you know? Do you really, really, really know that you are the dwelling place of God? The place where God's glory dwells. Our connection to this word, this Christ, is that we become like him. We become more fully who God created us to be. Secondly, what inhibits you what dulls your ability to receive the glory and shine it out to others? What keeps you from awakening to the divine presence of God within you? And then thirdly, where in this world are you being invited to shine like a star, to be a glorious light of Christ in this world? May the gift of Jesus the Christ, the Word, become flesh. Guide us, direct us, enlighten us in these remaining days of this Christmas season and in the new year of 2022. May it be so. Amen.